In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about three stress relievers you need to learn today. First, let's look at common unhealthy forms of stress relief. It is very important to relieve stress because of its negative impact on your body, but many people practice unhealthy forms of stress relief that are equally negative to your body's health. One of the most unhealthy stress relievers is TV. Though TV is appropriate in moderation, many people watch an unhealthy amount of TV as a way of coping with their stress. Watching this much TV is extremely bad for your health because it promotes a sedentary lifestyle that then supports many illnesses later in life. Another unhealthy stress reliever is unhealthy food habits. Many people overeat when they're stressed out because stress produces cortisol, which increases appetite. Overeating results in illnesses such as diabetes, obesity, and heart failure. On the other hand, stress can cause people to stop eating, which is equally as bad as overeating. Thirdly, many people use alcohol and drugs as a form of stress relief. Using these substances when you're stressed is bad because it often leads to a dependence on them. Now that you know about the three most common unhealthy forms of stress relief, let's look at three amazingly beneficial forms of stress relief. 1. Get active. The best way to relieve your stress is to get active. Although exercise won't remove the source of your stress, it will relieve the symptoms associated with your stress, which will allow you to feel better, have clearer thoughts, and deal with your problems in a more strategic manner. More so, the hormones that your body produces as a result of stress can be used as momentum for your exercise. This will make the exercises more intensive and transformative to your body. You can pick any form of activity to relieve stress. Dancing, walking, and weightlifting are all great ways to get active and deal with your stress in a healthy way. 2. Drink water. A second stress reliever that many people look over is simply drinking a glass of water. Many of the symptoms of stress can be dulled with water. The reason for this is that water increases energy levels, promotes brain function, and treats headaches. Additionally, drinking water will give you a chance to have a time out. Instead of looking at a blank screen or thinking about the tasks of tomorrow, take a few minutes to just drink water. To make this moment even more beneficial, Take the time to drink slowly and to intentionally breathe. Truly use your water break as a time to push pause on your stress. 3. Meditate Finally, the third stress relief technique is meditating. Meditating is a great way to control your mind, reconnect yourself, and relieve stress that you have acquired throughout the day. Even the Mayo Clinic endorses meditation as a way of relieving stress. According to the Mayo Clinic, Meditation can produce a deep state of relaxation. They suggest focusing your attention to eliminate the stream of jumbled thoughts. These jumbled thoughts create a crowded mind that then promotes stress, which makes it more difficult for you to rationally control your actions and thoughts. As you meditate, you may find the symptoms of stress decreasing, and you may even gain new perspectives on the stressful situation. Both of these effects are very beneficial if you find yourself feeling overstressed. 5 Myths About Meditation Debunking these myths will allow you and others to enjoy the benefits of meditation without fear or stigma. 1. Meditation takes up too much time One of the most common myths about meditation is that it takes up too much time and that you don't have enough time to meditate. In fact, this myth keeps many people from meditating because they assume they cannot fit meditating into their schedule. The truth of the matter is that meditation does take time, but everyone can do it. Just like any other task or action, meditation will require you to have a little time cut out for it. At the same time, though, meditation can fit into anyone's schedule. You just have to prioritize it. 2. Meditation is religious. A second common myth about meditation is that it is a religious or spiritual practice. This myth is partially true, but it does not have to be true for your practice. Your meditation is what you make it, and it is most important to make your meditation as comfortable for you as possible. 
Many religions incorporate meditation into their religious ritual. For example, some religions practice meditative yoga, while others pray. Both of these rituals are a form of meditations. If you are religious, feel free to incorporate your religious beliefs into your meditation. If you are not religious, that's fine too. Meditation can simply be used as a way to look beyond the clutter of your life to find stillness and peace within yourself. Many scientific studies support the benefits of all meditation, meaning that you don't have to connect yourself to a higher power for the meditation to be effective and personal. So meditation can be religious or non-religious. It depends on how you want to practice it. 3. Meditation is for the disciplined. Another myth about meditation is that it is only for people with strong self-discipline. Like the previous myth, this third myth is also partially true in that meditation is a form of self-discipline. It is a way to control your mind in order to escape from the clutter and noise around you. In this regard, meditation is for the disciplined because you must have a little bit of discipline in order to meditate. At the same time, though, you do not have to be extremely self-disciplined to meditate. You just have to be able to try to focus. You don't even have to be good at it. In fact, meditation is meant to help you get better. 4. Meditation is boring. The fourth myth about meditation is that it is boring. Many people think that meditation must involve sitting in silence while thinking and doing nothing. Though meditation can look like this, it does not have to. In fact, meditations can be very fun, engaging, and transformative. Some meditation techniques, for example, involve chanting or singing mantras and focusing your mind on said mantra. This form of meditation is the opposite of boring and involves a lot of sounds and sometimes movements. 5. You have to know how to meditate. Finally, the fifth myth about meditation is that you have to know how to meditate in order for it to be effective. This myth is the opposite of the truth. There is no one way to meditate. As a result, meditating is what you make it. Just do what feels right at the time and you're meditating correctly. There's nothing else to it. 5 Things to Help You Meditate Today I want to talk to you about meditation and give you some helpful tips on how to get into the right state of mind so your meditation works best for you. This can be hard at first, so take these steps and use them to create a space for you to meditate in. Make it your own and give yourself a more relaxing and positive meditative experience. So first you want to create a space for yourself to meditate. If you are home, then have some candles around only ones that you like the smell of, and maybe add a few small things that you love. These could be pillows, blankets, or anything else that makes you think of something calm. Once you have your space, you'll feel more at home and ready to meditate. Second, you don't want to overanalyze your breathing. This can be very tough at first, but it can be done. And yes, you are supposed to focus on your breathing. However, this can actually begin to distract you when you are trying to meditate and relax. If you find yourself getting too wrapped up in how fast or slow you're breathing, try to focus on something else, like the sound of your breathing or the noise of the candle's flame. Third, you want to begin to recognize the discomfort you might feel. This is true for many people when they first start. Oftentimes, this is because we live in such fast-paced lives that it can be tough to just sit down and be still. But you don't need to try and get comfortable if you aren't at first. This will come with time and practice. Instead, just allow yourself to feel those uncomfortable feelings. Then, let them go. This can be healing in many ways, so don't fight those negative feelings. Just allow them to pass naturally as you get used to meditating. Fourth, if you're not good at sticking to a schedule, and meditating should be at the same time each day, then get an accountability partner. This is someone who will meditate with you and ensure that you are not finding excuses to stop. This is not helpful for everyone, as many people like to meditate alone, but it can be a huge help when you find yourself becoming inconsistent. And lastly, you should try to not judge or rate your meditation experiences. There will be days where you feel great afterwards and feel like you are succeeding, 
but others you might get easily distracted or stop early. No matter what happens, meditation is about relaxation and mindfulness. Focus on how those can be beneficial even in small doses, and you won't feel the need to judge your sessions. Doing this can be very difficult when you're starting, and even more so when you are stressed out and busier than normal. However, meditation takes practice. You won't feel good at it at first, but if you stick with it, you can get all the benefits without the judging or uncomfortable feelings. Just try to put those things aside and allow yourself to meditate in peace. Well, those are my top five things to help you meditate. I hope you enjoyed this and use these tips to improve your meditation experiences and increase your positive energy throughout each and every day. Four Ways You Can Master Meditation Today, I want to tell you about four ways you can master meditation. But before I get into that, I want to take this opportunity to say that meditation is a process, not a destination. The more you meditate, the easier it will get. But there are always ways in which you can improve your meditation and grow as an individual and meditator. Now let us look at four ways you can master meditation. One. Focus on your breathing. The first way that you can master meditation is to focus on your breathing. Breathing is something that we do all the time, most of the time without even realizing it. During your meditation, you should use your breath as a way to intentionally anchor your meditation. In other words, utilize your psychological processes to make the most out of your meditation. Focusing on your breathing will help you master meditation for many reasons. Firstly, Breathing is beneficial for your body. It decreases stress, relieves pain, stimulates the lymphatic system, improves immunity, lowers blood pressure, and more. Secondly, focusing on your breathing forces you to live in the moment. Since breathing happens in the present, it focuses your mind on a present action, as opposed to a past or future action or idea. Thirdly, focusing on your breath will allow you to connect your mind and body as one. In the modern world, our bodies and mind are often treated as two separate entities, which results in a lot of stress and confusion about oneself. If you focus your mind on your breath, though, your mind is connected with your body through the process of breath. 2. Switch up your meditation. The second way that you can master meditation is to switch up your meditation practice. Many people make the mistake of choosing one practice and sticking to it exclusively. This may be great if you're new to meditating and are still learning how to best meditate, but only doing one meditation does not allow you to grow or challenge yourself. As you become more advanced at meditation, you should try different meditation techniques in order to improve your meditative abilities. Whether you try guided meditations, self-meditations, or group meditations, always try to push yourself so that way your skills grow. Three, be kind to yourself. A third way to master meditation is to be kind to yourself. Many people view meditation as a harsh form of self-discipline. While meditation is a form of discipline, this discipline should be mixed with kindness and compassion. By being kind to yourself, you put yourself in a more vulnerable position. It allows you to better feel your feelings in that moment and explore different parts of yourself. There is no way that you can master meditation without first learning how to speak to yourself in a kind and compassionate way. 4. Try to incorporate meditation into different parts of your life. Finally, the fourth way to master meditation is to incorporate meditation into different parts of your life. What I mean by this is to practice meditation even when you're not intentionally meditating. I know, that may sound difficult, but it will be extremely beneficial in the long run. You can incorporate meditation into different parts of your life by speaking kindly to yourself, intentionally breathing, and living in the moment. If you are able to master these things outside of meditation, your meditation will be much easier and you will be able to grow even further. Today, I want to talk to you about six mistakes you make that stop you from meditating. These mistakes can be intentional or unintentional, 
but they all hinder you from either trying to meditate or from meditating effectively. Let us look at these six mistakes. 1. Not holding yourself accountable. The first mistake that can stop you from meditating is simply not holding yourself accountable. In other words, you don't feel accountable to yourself for doing your meditation. You may be making this mistake if you keep telling yourself you'll start tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes, or if you have frequent gaps between your meditation practices. The only person who can make you meditate is yourself. If you do not buckle down and hold yourself accountable, you can never expect to start meditating or improve your practice. You can hold yourself more accountable by rewarding yourself each time you meditate. This reward can be a sweet treat or relaxing bath. Whatever it is, do not reward yourself if you fail to meditate. 2. Have too high of expectations. Another mistake that can stop you from meditating is having too high of expectations. If you expected meditation to take away all your stress and to make you completely emotionally stable overnight, you probably found yourself very disappointed after your first meditation, causing you to think that meditation is just a bunch of malarkey. You can begin to solve this problem by adjusting your expectations. Recognize that meditation takes a lot of time and energy and that it cannot solve all of your problems. Once you adjust your expectations, you should start to feel more uplifted about your practice. 3. Doing the wrong meditation A third mistake that may be stopping you from meditating is that you tried the wrong meditation. Today, there are countless tools to help you meditate, and each tool has a different meditation technique. Some techniques are very traditional and rooted in religious thought, while other techniques are much more related to everyday life. Although none of these techniques are wrong, some techniques will be better suited for you than others. If you've stopped meditating because you did not like the practice, try a different practice instead. 4. Relying on guided meditations. The fourth mistake you may be making is relying too heavily on guided meditations. Guided meditations are a great tool for learning how to meditate or meditating if you are very tired. If you only rely on guided meditations, though, you will quickly get bored and your meditations will hit a lag. You can avoid this mistake by pushing your limits in trying different meditations. 5. Bypassing. A fifth mistake you may be making by bypassing your real problems with meditation. In other words, you use meditation as a way to avoid your actual problems and feelings. When you use meditation in this way, you're not actually meditating. You're simply distracting yourself, and you will soon find that the problems and feelings you were avoiding come back. 6. Actively trying to control your thoughts. The last mistake you may be making is actively trying to control your thoughts. Many new meditators try to put their thoughts in a box. When their mind wanders, they start talking to themselves in a very negative way in order to try to control their thoughts. Doing this turns the meditation into a negative experience. Instead of trying to control your thoughts, think of meditation as a time to guide your thoughts. If your mind wanders, bring the thoughts back to the meditation. In this presentation, I want to give you 8 tips to help you meditate more. These tips will allow you to meditate every day without needing to reschedule your entire calendar. Let's look at these tips. 1. Meditate in small intervals. The best way to meditate more is to commit to smaller intervals. Instead of setting aside an hour a day to meditate, set aside multiple intervals of 2 or 5 minutes. Meditating in smaller intervals will allow you to disperse your meditation so that you can do more without rescheduling your entire day. 2. Incorporate meditation into your routine. Another way to meditate more is to simply incorporate it into your routine. Just like anything else, you have to prioritize your meditation. If you don't make it part of your routine, you won't do it. Many choose to put a meditation either in their morning routine or night routine. A smart way to incorporate meditation into your routine is to simply meditate for a few minutes before or after every meal. Since you have to take time to eat anyways, use that time to meditate too. 
Meditating before your meal is a great way to slow your mind down before eating, which will cause you to make healthier food choices and enjoy your meal more. 3. Multitask The third way to meditate more is to multitask while you meditate. Whenever you perform daily tasks, such as cleaning or waiting in line for your coffee, you can do little meditations. Meditating during your daily routine will allow you to minimize your time without cutting out any chunks in your schedule. 4. Try yoga. You can also meditate more by changing out your workout routine. Instead of going to your regular Zumba class, try a yoga class instead. Yoga is a great form of exercise that challenges your mind and body. Almost all yoga classes incorporate meditation into their exercises, so you will be able to work out and meditate at the same time. 5. Listen to a guided meditation while you shower. Many people use their shower time to reflect and think about their life, so it makes sense to use that time in order to meditate more. While you are showering, you might want to practice breathing techniques or listen to a guided meditation. Just make sure that you take special precautions so that way you don't slip and fall. 6. Meditate during commercials. Another great way to meditate more is to meditate during TV commercials. Like most people in the modern age, you probably watch a lot of TV. Instead of surfing the web during the commercial breaks, you should use that time in order to strengthen your mind through meditation. 7. Fall asleep to a guided meditation. The seventh tip for meditating more is to fall asleep while listening to a guided meditation. Most people need a couple of minutes before they can fall asleep. Use those minutes to listen to a guided meditation. Though you may think that listening to a guided meditation will keep you awake, there are many that are intentionally designed for falling asleep, allowing you to meditate and fall asleep quickly. Eight. View anywhere as your meditation space. The final tip for meditating more is to view anywhere you go as your meditation space. Many people fall into the trap of thinking that you have to meditate in a still, quiet room. Though a quiet room may make meditation easier, any place is suitable for meditation. Try changing your mentality about your meditation space and instead view the world as your meditation space. Today, I want to tell you eight ways to meditate for busy people. First, let's discuss what meditating means. Historically, scholars have had a hard time defining meditation. Many view meditation as a practice with the aim of training your attention and awareness so that you become more mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable. Meditative techniques can include mindfulness, focusing on a single thought, or intentional breathing. No matter the technique, meditating involves focusing your mind and stopping the routine and business around and within you. Since meditating involves controlling your mental and physical actions, busy people can find it difficult to incorporate meditation into their life. But there are eight easy ways to introduce meditative practices into your busy routine. Let us look at those eight techniques. 1. Be in the moment. The best way to meditate when you have a busy schedule is to be in the moment. Being in the moment means to focus on the present as opposed to the past or future while performing your daily tasks and chores. This step may seem easy enough, but you will find that a lot of your life revolves around the finished past or imagined future. 2. Breathe during your breaks. The second way to meditate during your busy life is to incorporate intentional breathing into your daily actions. Although we breathe our entire life, very few people take the time to breathe with intention. Next time you take a sip of coffee, for example, take a couple of seconds to close your eyes and intentionally breathe in the steamy air. 3. Meditate while you wait. Another way to meditate if you are a busy person is to simply meditate while you wait. Studies show that the average human will stand in lines for approximately six months of their life. Instead of just waiting in line, use that time to focus your mind on some particular idea, thought, or feeling. You'll be surprised how fast your wait will go. 4. 
multitask. A fourth way to introduce meditation into your busy schedule is to multitask. Instead of absent-mindedly doing your daily chores, incorporate meditative techniques into those actions. Multitasking in this way will allow you to meditate without adding any more tasks to your daily routine. 5. Incorporate meditation into your daily routine. You can also find time to meditate by incorporating it into your schedule. Many adults have a morning routine, for example. Find open time in that routine, such as when you're pouring your coffee or watching the sunrise. Incorporating meditation into your schedule will force you to meditate without it taking up any more time of your day. 6. Attach meditation to mealtime. Everyone eats. So one of the best ways to meditate when your schedule is loaded is to practice meditative eating practices. These practices can either include thanking a higher power for the meal, or it can simply be eating your food slowly and giving yourself time to appreciate the flavor of the food. 7. Drive in silence. In the modern world, adults spend much of their life in their car. Why not use that time to meditate? One easy way to meditate in the car is to drive without the radio on. While you sit in silence, control your mind and focus on the drive. 8. Have a gratitude journal. The last way to incorporate meditation into your busy routine is to start a gratitude journal. Simply write one thing you are grateful for each day. This should take you all of 30 seconds to complete. In this tutorial, I will teach you how you can develop your meditation skills. First, I will begin by talking about common problems that people face when meditating. When people begin meditating, they find that it's very hard to control their wandering thoughts. Whether it be a memory from the past, a barking dog, or tasks that must be accomplished before tomorrow, it is so easy to let your mind wander while you're trying to practice your meditation. If this sounds like you, you are not alone. Most people, even the most experienced of meditators, face this problem at some point during their meditative practice. Luckily, there are ways that you can develop your meditation skills in order to keep your mind on track. Let's look at some of these ways to deepen your meditative practice. Let your thoughts finish naturally. Whenever you find your mind wandering, the best way to develop your practice is to simply let the thought finish naturally. That does not mean let your mind wander directionless. Instead, it means to allow the thought to finish so that your mind doesn't keep going back to it. Let's say you catch yourself thinking about a stressful day tomorrow. Instead of immediately stopping your train of thought, you should allow your brain to finish its thought. Once the thought is over, gently redirect your thoughts to the meditation. Try different practices. Another way to develop your meditation skills is to try different meditative practices. Trying different practices will allow you to discover what meditations are most beneficial for your life. Additionally, trying new practices will challenge your mind and make the practice more engaging from the beginning. Some different meditation practices include visualization, mindfulness, intentional breathing, or living in the moment. If you find that a meditation practice is unenjoyable or uncomfortable, you can gently transition into a different practice. Meditate to the sound of your breath. One of the easiest ways to develop your meditation is to meditate on the sound of your breath. All day, every day, we breathe in and out without realizing it. Instead of robotically breathing during your meditative practice, use an intentional breathing technique to anchor your mind and body as one. You can try different types of breathing techniques during your practice. Begin by closing your eyes. Once they are closed, breathe in for 5 seconds and breathe out for 7 seconds. If this time is too difficult for you, feel free to adjust the seconds. Always aim to make the exhale longer than the inhale, though. While you are breathing, try to visualize the air coming in through your nose, swirling around your entire body, and exiting out of your mouth. Try to feel the life cycle of the air with each breath. Create a meditation space. Finally, 
The last way that you can develop your meditation skills is by creating a meditation space in your home. The space can be as large or as small as you would like, but make sure that it is designated to your meditation practice exclusively. When you pick out your spot, you can decorate it with comfy blankets, pillows, or anything else that might make you feel more comfortable during your meditative practice. Once your meditation space is created, only use it for your meditation. Do not let any of your daily activities or thoughts infiltrate the safe space. Designating a space purely for your meditative practice will allow you to get into your headspace as soon as you go into this area of your home. Today, I want to tell you about the one secret to being stress-free. Let us start by looking at what stress is and the impact it has on our bodies. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It is how your body reacts to any challenge or demand. Thoughts, events, or feelings of frustration, anger, or nervousness can result in stress. When your body experiences stress, it releases hormones to make your brain more alert, muscles to tense, and pulse to increase. In short bursts, stress can be a good thing. Short bursts of stress is called acute stress. When you slam on your brakes, have an approaching deadline, or find yourself in a dangerous situation, you experience acute stress. The reason that acute stress can be a good thing is that it can save your life in dangerous situations or motivate you to get a task finished on time. Long-term stress, also called chronic stress, can be very bad for you though. Financial problems, chronic anxiety, or abusive relationships can cause chronic stress. This type of stress is very bad for you and can result in a number of health problems over time. Some health problems associated with chronic stress include high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression or anxiety, skin problems like acne or eczema, menstrual problems. The One Secret to Be Stress-Free Now that you know the dangers of stress, you may be thinking of ways to alleviate any chronic or unneeded stress from your life. In short, the one secret to be stress-free is to live in the present. When you live in the present, you let go of both the past and future to instead live your life with your body, feelings, and immediate situation joined as one. The benefit of living in the present is that you focus on what you can control and let go of things that are out of control. You might be thinking, who doesn't live in the present? And brush off this advice. But the truth of the matter is that very few people intentionally live in the present. Let us try a short exercise. I want you to close your eyes and think about everything that you have done today. Especially take note of all the times that you lived in either the past or the future. Common examples of living outside the present include worrying about tomorrow's busy schedule, allowing past relationship mistakes to dictate recent relationships or staying glued to your phone in social situations. My guess is that a lot of your day was spent worrying about the past or the future. If this sounds like you, then it is time to start living in the present more. Of course, thinking about your future and reflecting on your past are both good things. In fact, thinking about your past and future helps you to grow and create a life you want. But it is important that you use the past and future to create a present that makes you happy and fulfilled. Start harnessing your energy towards the present. Allow yourself to feel emotions as they come and focus on the tasks that are directly in front of you. As you do this, you will see much of your stress melt away, helping you to live a stress-free life. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about the top four skills you need to master to relieve stress. Without these skills, you will not be able to healthfully manage your stress levels. Let's look at these skills. 1. Avoid stress. The top skill to master is to simply avoid stress. This skill may seem like a sarcastic answer, but it is truly helpful. There are several practical ways that you can avoid stress. Firstly, take control of what you can control. If you know that you're going to have a stressful day or that arriving late to work causes you stress, 
Plan accordingly so that you can attempt to avoid the stress. Secondly, avoid people who make your stress much worse. Obviously, we cannot avoid everyone who causes stress, but try to minimize your encounters with them. More so, learn to say no to people. Many people find themselves in stressful situations because they don't know how to say no. Learning to say no when you are already stressed or busy will prevent you from experiencing any more stress. Simply communicate to the other person that you are unable to accomplish the task, and they will probably not mind that you said no. 2. Change the situation Another skill to master is knowing how to change your situation for the best. Whenever you feel overwhelmed or stressed, be able to take charge of the situation and think of ways to effectively alleviate the stress of that situation. If another person is causing you to feel stress, communicate with that person. They are probably unaware of the stress they're putting on you. Remember to approach this person with respect and vulnerability. It is best to use I pronouns so that the other person does not feel attacked. If your stress is coming from time management related issues, learn how to manage your time better. Either schedule fewer appointments or learn how to multitask. Be sure to take notes of your limits so that way you know how much you can handle in the future. 3. Accept what you can't control. The previous two skills involve knowing how to change your situation, but there are many instances where you have no control over the matter. Whenever you find yourself in this place, you need to have the skill of being able to accept what you cannot change. Being able to accept these things will help you to relieve stress from your life. One of the best ways to accept what you can't control is to be kind to yourself. Instead of thinking negative thoughts about yourself or others, think of positive things that you can say. Speaking positivity and kindness to yourself will allow you the sensitivity to accept things without letting them affect your mindset. 4. Adapt to situations. Finally, the last skill to master is learning how to adapt to stressful situations. If you have accepted that there is a situation you cannot control, find a way to adapt to that situation. Adapting will remove the stress of trying to figure out your place in the situation. You can adapt to a situation by adjusting your expectations. In many cases, situations are stressful because they do not match the vision inside your head. Change that vision so that way it matches reality better. Another way to adapt to stressful situations is to try to think about the situation differently. You can try looking at the situation from the other person's perspective, for example. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.